These are microscopic animals and plants. Rather than being made of many cells, they simply exist as single cells on their own. These images have been magnified hundreds of times. The single cells are so small that you can't normally see them. It was only with the invention of the microscope, just over 300 years ago, that creatures like this became visible. Before then, no one knew that cells existed. Ah. <laughs> you know, the closer you look at things, the more amazing they seem to get. If I hold this piece of cork in my hand, it has a definite shape. Feel, I can see the colour, but put it under my new microscope and... Uh, well, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Oh, oh. This is Robert Hooke. It's 1665 and microscopes have only just been invented. For the first time, scientists were able to look at things too small to be seen by the naked eye. And Robert Hooke was fascinated by what he saw. Oh! <laughs> This piece of cork seems to be made up of tiny compartments, like lots of little rooms all fitted together. Rooms or cells. Yes, they look like cells. Hmm. Hook became famous for being the first person to use the word cell to describe the room-like structures inside his piece of cork. He spent many hours carefully drawing their honeycomb pattern. Although Hook gave cells their name, nobody knew what they were or even what they did. To find out more about cells, scientists had to be able to see in more detail. But the early microscopes of the 1600s just weren't good enough. It was 150 years before better lenses were crafted and a clearer picture became possible. In 1833, one of the leading botanists of the time was Scotsman Robert Brown. Having travelled the world and collected hundreds of plants, he made a startling discovery. There are so many plants, all of them so different. Except, except when I look at them close up. Every plant is made up of cells. And inside every cell there is a sort of dark, dense blob. Whichever plant I choose, it's always the same. I can find not one single exception. Robert Brown called the blob-like structure inside each cell the nucleus. About this time, scientists were beginning to realise that all living things were made of cells. A few years later, in 1839, two German scientists, Dr Schwann and Dr Schleiden, came up with a theory which was to change the way scientists viewed the living world. Dr Schwann? You're Dr. Schlein. That's them. I think we have discovered something completely amazing. The material inside the cell moves about. Very slowly, I grant you, but still, she moves. We can only conclude one thing from this. You mean? Yeah, the cells are alive. <coughs> This got them thinking. Sometimes a single cell exists on its own. But more complex creatures like you or I are made up of millions of living cells, all working together. All living things are made of cells, no matter how big or small, like a plant. <laughs> Even this fly. Yeah. And the theory they eventually came up with was that cells are the basic building blocks of life. From then on, science has never looked back. As better microscopes have been developed, our view of the world has changed, and scientists have been able to look at small things in more and more detail. This pinhead has been magnified by a modern electron microscope. Instead of making the pin hundreds of times bigger, it magnifies it thousands of times. At an even greater magnification, 
The speckles on the pin can be seen to be tiny bacteria, very simple single cells.